It's a good thing that the notorious 1981 box office flop, Inchon, is the first movie that we're talking about in 2019, because once I'm done talking about it, it'll be 2020. Inchon is a movie rich with so much insane backstory that it'd make for an absolutely fascinating documentary, and I'm gonna have a hard time condensing all of it into this review. For instance, how about producers of the film hiring a psychic to communicate with the ghost of Douglas MacArthur to help improve the script? That happened. Though I think you were accidentally communicating with a demon, this movie's literally ghost-written. The film is an epic story of the Battle of Incheon during the Korean War, starring Sir Lawrence Olivier as General Douglas MacArthur leading U.S. military operations to Incheon, where residents are also fleeing to the capital city of Seoul during the attack. The movie shares a lot in common with Michael Cimino's Heaven's Gate in that both were wildly over-budgeted passion projects, both with a similar budget as well, this being $46 million in early 80s dollars. Both were gigantic financial losses. Inchon only made back $5 million. But whereas Heaven's Gate has gotten a critical reevaluation over the years, complete with a gorgeous transfer on the Criterion Collection, Inchon is still considered by many, from Newsweek to TV Guide to various books on the subject, to be one of the worst films ever made. Even taking home Razzies for worst film, worst director, worst screenplay, and worst actor, even the far superior Stinker's Bad Movie Awards agreed with the Razzies on this and gave it worst film of the year as well. And unlike Heaven's Gate's glorious transfer, Inchon has never received a VHS or DVD release, and the only way it can be seen is via TV recordings from the early 2000s when it aired on the Good Life Network, then owned by the Unification Church. And speaking of which... That's where the movie came from. The movie was financed by the Unification Church and the Reverend Sung Young Moon, plus Japanese publisher Mitsuharu Ishii. Cast was paid in cash, with Lawrence Olivier openly admitting to just doing the movie for the $1 million paycheck, and Ben Gazzara and David Jansen said that they only did the film because Olivier was in it. Terrence Young was hired as director, who had previously directed the James Bond films Dr. No, From Russia With Love, and Thunderball. Robin Moore, author of The French Connection, was hired to write the script, but was told by producer Ishii to put a heavy emphasis on Douglas MacArthur's spiritualism and to include multiple love stories in the film. But as the poster says, it's a story of love, destiny, heroes, and corncob pipes. Inchon has been buried so hard over the years, the film is like the forgotten bomb. And I imagine many of you too will forget this film, since some of you will probably only make it through half of the episode. <laughs> yep, it's one of those. Is this some kind of overlooked classic that needs reevaluation? <laughs> nope, it's still awful. The airing couldn't even make up its mind on whether it was a TVG or TVPG, but it assures us that it is not a documentary. Thanks, I thought Lawrence Olivier actually was General MacArthur. And never forget that it's good life's fault we're watching this. How about a backstory? And on the battleship Missouri in Tokyo Bay, General Douglas MacArthur accepted the surrender of the Japanese armed forces. Should I be taking notes on this? I am taking notes on this. What do you think I do when I watch these movies? There are very few movies that reference the Union of Savi. Bravo, Inchon, and your mini toys! Russian aircraft, heavy artillery, anti-aircraft guns, and most important of all, tanks. See, if this movie really wanted to bomb, it would have built cities on those tanks. And believe me, that when I tell you about how much this thing costs, a lot of that is in the sheer amount of explosions in this film. The movie blew up the opening credits! Jeez, 
Jesus! This is neither TVG or TVPG! And it's not just Inchon, it's Inchon! How could this be considered to be one of the worst films ever when it's got an actual film critic in the movie? Jerry Goldsmith does the soundtrack, but I think they should have let someone else step in in at least one part of it. Due to its independent financing, the film is often called the most expensive B-movie ever made. And in the credits, I can see why. They seem as random as the opening of a Godfrey Ho movie, which is ironic because Godfrey Ho actually did make an Inchon movie. It all begins in a small village ten miles away. Ten miles away from what? From me? The movie's in Chatham, Illinois? At 2 hours and 20 minutes, this is a long movie. Please give me some characters I can identify with. <laughs> Who the hell was that? Why are we moving on to the next scene? I can't really put my finger on it. I just feel like Roger Moore should be in this movie. Jacqueline Bissett plays Barbara. That's all I really need to know about her that and that she's a great customer for you such a beautiful lady such a good customer my very best price well the second best customer next to johnny they're receiving horrible news the bombs on the way bootleg copies of inchon or maybe something else <laughs> supposed to happen or is the driver drunk? Apparently they ran out of their squib budget on the opening scene. This feels like it should be part of an Estes Perkle sermon where he warns us against the dangers of commie invaders. It's really hard to be taking these scenes of carnage seriously with the good life plastered on the bottom of the screen. Can we get some quiet time in here? No. Somebody get the hell out of here without you. I have to report the soul. <laughs> Would you just let a scene properly end? What is happening? I understand that you're leaving. Liv. What's between you and me has nothing to do with anything else. Sounds like you two have a lot on your plate. Who the hell are you? No wonder Jackie Treehorn had to resort to doing porn. He wasted all his money on this. So anyway, we're outside now. Just remember one thing. I love you. Love, destiny, heroes, Inchon. Before General Frank gets the hell out of there, he joins the Seven Samurai. You'll need this. That's Toshiro Mifune. He can chop you in half with his eyes. He doesn't need a gun. But then a tank ran through a greenhouse and still has plants stuck to it. This movie is random. It pretty much goes scene, random slaughter, scene, random slaughter, all edited together unseamlessly. Look at this. This movie's action scenes are designed to wake up sleeping audience members. Sometimes it'll just fade out, and I take it that happened because of a commercial break, but I can't safely guarantee that. The movie wastes so much time on non-character building that it may as well have small talk. You know, my wife did when I uh, met her at the airport and told her about Lynn. She got a car and a driver and went shopping for this furniture for a interior decorating business. I care about this as much as Toshiro does. Cut to more carnage. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. It's as if they shot a bunch of B-roll of random massacres and spliced it into the movie with no rhyme or reason between the melodrama. And I'm only 14 minutes in. There is over two hours left. TVG. Oh, and there's Richard Roundtree after Shaft in Africa. I guess Shaft in Korea is the next logical step. 
Haven't finished setting up other characters yet. Let's introduce some more. Here's David Jansen and some reporters. Ooh, I like two lumps with my cup of Inchon. The hell? I know it's a Korean War film, but I didn't know Hot Lips Oolahan was going to be in it. Don't get used to these being prominent characters. You're going to forget them soon enough anyway. Even though it looks like there's a femme fatale trying to steal their diamonds for some reason. Why are we here? Gentlemen, ladies, good morning. I have a short statement to make. Nothing about this movie is short. Oh, and uh, ooh, don't forget your uh, your bulbs. <laughs> Why does this scene have sex appeal? And there's our lead, Laurence Olivier, 20 minutes into the film. He looks less like General MacArthur and more like Bob Newhart. Shh, be quiet, this master of acting is talking. He'd sell out the army. Their mothers, too, come to that for a handful of boats. Washington? That's the end of that scene. No one cuts off Olivier. Get back to Sir Lawrence, you jackasses. You found a shell on the beach. Uh, what's the matter? Doesn't it uh, sound like the ocean when you hold it up to your ear? Well, it is. <laughs> that MacArthur was hilarious. As bad as the quality of this copy is, you can see the money on screen. It just doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the film. Michael Bay incorporates his explosions better than this film. Yes, I know Frank. We went to their wedding. Oh, sorry to let that explosion interrupt your tea date. I really hope these two know each other because MacArthur sure is getting a handful. Almost everyone has confidence in the general. If there's anybody going to save this world, you know it just has to be you. My, but you pull it strong. That's the way it's going to be. Well, the dog doesn't seem to trust him, but only because the dog remembers him from Marathon Man. The soundtrack is telling me that this should be epic and meaningful, but then it just cuts away again. <laughs> Blew up Jerry Goldsmith! Oh, right. I forgot Jacqueline Bissett was in this. This is like an ensemble you'd see in an Irwin Allen production. I keep waiting for a giant swarm of bees to show up and attack. Something. Anything. Please. This is Battle Overload. Oof, things are so intense, the movie just blacked out. Thank God we have our heroes. Please, please, Americans, you got the soul? Give me a ride. Don't encourage her. Don't even look at her. When the hell is the Predator gonna show up? Okay, fine, we'll take you to your wedding. Nothing else going on today. Anyway, glad these two could get together. I've known them for minutes. So Frank's story is that he's looking for his wife, Barbara, I think. And that's after he broke off an affair with this Korean girl, I think. The key word of this movie is... I think. Whatever, here's some people on a bridge. Henderson! Glad to see you. Those two know each other, I guess. I mean, I think. This is the same font as the location text, so this must be the name of the bridge. Oh, Barbara can escape. Guess she's adopted those kids now. Damn, though, there is some crazy-ass stunt work in this. That is, if this is stunt work, and not simply a tank driving through a crowd, not to mention other insane action scenes. <laughs> Bridge over river, that happened. This movie is also like Heaven's Gate, in that it's multiple levels of holy shit, are these extras gonna be okay? And not even the subtitling works. Who is saying this? Is it multiple people? Is it one person? Sure, sure. Being forced to execute people is tough, but damn it, we need to know where the White Arabian Stallion is hidden. I think it may be near Lake Isabella. Now, excuse me, I got another important phone call to make. Uh, it's probably a dud of some kind, Willard. I'll, I'll send some men out and they... 
Oh, is, is, is that right? Gee, I was, uh, I was sort of hoping that was your watch, uh, making that noise, Willard. I wish Newhart was here. Where's hell is for heroes when I need them? This film is either too loud or too quiet. I'm not excited. But I can't sleep. Then put on a copy of Inchon. Mr. Truman and all those little men in Washington thought that by leaving you out here, far away from everything, that you would be forgotten. That, that you would simply disappear from sight. Again, are you talking about the movie? Now get back to the court, Coach Gene Keedy. I wonder where Frank's wife is, ask no one. Hurry! All he wanted to do was clean your windshield! Heard you were having car troubles. Luckily, we're all within a block of each other through this whole movie. I can fix your vehicle. Ow! Damn, that's hot. Idiot! It's like Windy City-style melodrama, only if every now and then Kelly's heroes happened. See? This film is longer than the actual Korean War. Then again, so was M.A.S.H., but M.A.S.H. was so much better than this. Oh, thank God, Batman is here. Oh, wait, that doesn't say Batman. Eh, I guess Hamlet will do. Look closely out there, Frank, for you will see the gorgeous opening credits to Cannibal Holocaust. We got a fight ahead of us and full bellies. It's rare I see a movie so bad that it's actually making the critics sick in the actual movie. Oh, right, the reporters. There was a shorter version of this movie where the reporters were actually cut from the film. Yeah, no shit. Inchon, never forget the battle, but always forget the characters. His men wrapped him in the tattered battle, scarred flag of Cemetery Ridge. Stop making this flight feel longer! Gentlemen, we've got a plan of action here. Unfortunately, we're up against a group of tanks who are trying to stop Rex Reed from entering the country. Between this film and Myra Breckenridge, apparently it's a curse to have film critics in your movie. Unless it's me, of course, every movie that I'm in is perfect. If you look closely enough, something is going on. Good God, this movie may have killed more people in the actual war. This film doesn't work as a movie, but it works as a stunt reel. Why don't you just tell me how the scene ends? Yes, it's a great defeat. A crushing defeat for the enemy. Stop pretending this wasn't just a series of random action scenes that could be spliced anywhere in the movie. Anyway, as Moses leads his people to Seoul, that's another word that can be used to describe this movie. Anyway... Anyway... Alright, this character again. Who... Maybe dead now? Maybe? I think? I don't know. Here, let's weekend at Bernie's the shit out of her. Even the kids are falling asleep and they're surrounded by heavy gunfire. Oh, uh, she's fine, I guess. If not, I'm sure the flying nun could bring her back to life. Meanwhile, in the worst game of chicken ever played... Well, that's surprising. I thought the trucks were gonna win. And Ben Gazzara is here now in different clothes. I'm sure that made sense on paper. It's taken me two days to watch this movie. The battle of watching Inchon was not won in a day. Now come with me, Sailor Moon. We're in class now. It's a history class where the teacher is drunk and we're all falling asleep. Today's reading, Oliver Twist. Fill up her damn bowl and spit in it. There is a portion of this movie that had to be rewritten, and even in the uncut version, the journalist scenes were shortened, all due in part to David Jansen's death during filming. Must have made room for more riveting scenes like this. Where we still hold this small area, 
around Pusan. Pusan, I repeat. And not Dunkirk. Damn it, Dunkirk is a way better movie than this. The military does not have the heart to tell him that this is not a map of Florida. Sir, you don't want a vacation here. The military is planning their surprise amphibious strike at Incheon in order to save South Korea. That seems complicated. Can't we just get in touch with Aquaman? And no more questions. Put your fucking hand down and end the scene. Good, now the planning scene can end, so long as there's no surprise guests. I don't think there's any reason for any further discussion. Therefore, but I think there is, General. I sure hope the studio audience was paid in cash, too. But there is an Olivier on screen, and his performance is going to be perfection. I just know it. Do something! You're forcing me to make another reference. <laughs> Ah, uh, good. North Korea was defeated by spinach. Anyway, MacArthur says that this amphibious surprise attack should happen. And then the capital city of Seoul will be recaptured, and the whole invading army of North Koreans will be cut off. That's really all you need to know about that scene. It's a 10-minute scene with only 5 seconds of pertinent information, Plus another five seconds of overacting. Act now, or we will die. Hoo-hoo, <laughs> tough audience. Now let's do the same scene again, only with a giant risk board and the same slice of overacting. Here, I shall crush them. I have no inch on! But really, this is all for the people. And it means the Koreans can harvest this year's rice crops and the people can eat! Are you pissed about this? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? It seems like it would be a good thing, but it also seems like it upsets you. Oh, and Frank is here. Not sure if he's lost, but I think the next dude is... <laughs> That's one hell of a hood ornament. The plan is for Frank to turn on a lighthouse and signal the U.S. troops to attack. Again, lighthouse, just signal Aquaman. We hate to interrupt this scene, sir, but... There's a Korean War fight club going on. Instead of fighting each other, next time, fight against the enemy. Why were they even fighting to begin with? But the worst part of the war, not enough makeup. War is hell, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm still a perfect 10. The real war is gonna happen when Catherine tells Frank that they now have to raise five children. Now get some sleep, kids, and make sure you snore in rhythm like the Three Stooges and float a feather above your mouth when you breathe. Good, now husband and wife can have their first scene together. They seem happy. When the action scenes are on screen, I'm begging for earmuffs. And when it's the romance sequences, I'm also begging for earmuffs. There's all kinds of romance in this movie. Richard Roundtree worked up the courage to tell Frank that he loves him. But enough about that, let's cut to some tanks. Why was Richard there? Who cares? Okay, fine. He was there to wake him up early for their annual fishing trip. Gentlemen, we need to come up with a plan to catch that fish. But let's dim the lights to cue another commercial break. Who needs a fade? This plan seems really important. You promised to get this cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that lighthouse plan. What of MacArthur's dirty jacket? The mystery of the dirty jacket is solved, and now we can take the lighthouse. <laughs> mm, I'm surprised that didn't cause an explosion. <laughs> There! Much better! Excellent, they got the lighthouse working. And there's still 30 minutes of the movie left. Well, I don't know. I don't know. 
and it's 30 minutes used wisely, of course. I hate this movie. If this were Escape from Alcatraz, this scene would mean the movie's over. Though this one has more explosions. Ben Gazzara's serious about his fishing. Hope they can keep the lighthouse lit as they fight off Goldfinger's henchmen. Although there is one cameo I wasn't expecting. And I'm trying to tell you, General, you don't have ten minutes. The boats are already coming into the channel. That was dub master Edward Mannix dubbing that guy's voice. Now it really does feel like an exploitation film. If instead of Lucio Fulci, it was directed by Molasses. For the disaster, change that a failure for the failure at Inchon. Good, now they can play a proper game of battleship when they take the city. All these ships and soldiers were needed to protect Rex Reed after his controversial review of Old Boy where he said, what can you expect from a nation weaned on kimchi? Bitch, you were in Inchon! I hope the twist of the movie is that these are all just toys, and the whole movie has been some kid playing with them in his bathtub, and completely destroying his G.I. Joes. So this is gonna be the rest of the movie, isn't it? It's impressive and dangerous looking, but as shallow as watching wartime B-roll in a Nazi exploitation film. Phew! Now I don't have to tell my wife about the affair! Surely there's some other good news here. <laughs> There is good news. It's lunchtime. Although I'm not sure if your students are learning anything. You're a terrible English and art teacher. More good news. MacArthur has finally settled on a theme. Hi, Bob! We're glad you finally won the Battle of Inchon for us. I guess it's speech time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Riveting. Guess that's easier than just writing your own speech. I think you can end now. And thus it finally does end with newsreel footage of actual MacArthur giving an actual speech. Wait a minute, I thought this was a documentary. Oh right, it wasn't a documentary. And thus the first Six Flags was opened. There, the movie's finally over with. I told you it would take all year to watch this. It's Christmas time again, and I had to resort to wearing last year's onesie because I couldn't leave the house. Completely disowned by the film's director is nothing more than a propaganda film. Plus, the Olivier biographer called it the worst film of Olivier's career. Although, war changes everything. It sure does. It's the only film from the Unification Church, a movie that was called such a mega bomb that at one point held the Guinness World Record for biggest movie money loss that it completely shit can proposed films on Jesus and Elvis from the same producers. The movie's drama is flat and sometimes hilarious. The action scenes are random and can be interchanged or even deleted throughout the film. But is it one of the worst films ever made like the reputation suggests? Pfft, you know who you're talking to? Of course it's not. But is it one of the worst big budget war movies? Absolutely it is. The movie is like giving one of the biggest budgets of the time to a kindergartner and asking them to paint a replica of the Mona Lisa and then fracturing their fingers beforehand just for the hell of it. Given how much was put into the action and the stunt work, it probably does deserve to be seen in a much more polished and widescreen version, simply out of respect. But the movie was bad in 1981, and it's still bad in 2019. But who knows, even though it was laughed off the screen and very, very quickly withdrawn from theaters, perhaps there's someone out there who liked it. So let me get to know you better, Vincent Dunn. What's your favorite movie? Inchon. <laughs> Good one, Vince. No one's actually seen Inchon. Oh, my mistake. Apparently, it's my favorite movie. Bull
Bullshit! That snob movie is full of nothing but lies and Korean propaganda. I knew it was a mistake to take the Unification Church's money for that film. I don't even smoke a corncob pipe!